If the world's most powerful country would have the highest inflation in the last 40 years, and the president would find the rise in prices funny, we probably wouldn't have a word for it. But us President Joe Biden has really put his feet to such a scandal. At the White House dinner, the joke about the rising prices of everything in America made Joe Biden laugh a lot. You've come into office, things are really looking up. You know, gas is up, rent is up, food is up, everything. No, it really has been a tough first year for you, Mr. President. There is only one thing more pathetic than the President of the United States finding such a sad situation funny when Americans are living at an expense that he hasn't experienced in 40 years. That is the possibility of the United States going bankrupt. Because the USA is not only the most powerful state in the world, but also the most indebted state, the US government is the most indebted state with $30 trillion. So what happens if the US can't pay its debt? If there was a company that couldn't pay its debt, it would be easy to answer. The company would go bankrupt. If it is a state, even the United States of America, which has the world's largest economy, the answer is not so easy. Because record level debt isn't the only problem that will cause America to go bankrupt. America is facing both an energy and food crisis at the same time. With regard to food shortage, yes, we did re re talk about food shortages. And, uh, and it's going to be real. If you look at those who rule America, they say that Russian President Putin is responsible for all these troubles. I'm doing everything within my power by executive orders to bring down the price and address the Putin price hike. He blamed Russia's invasion of Ukraine not only for rising energy prices, but also for food prices not seen since the 2008 crisis. Uh, the price of these sanctions is not just imposed upon Russia, it's imposed upon an awful lot of countries as well, including European countries and our country as well. Because both uh, Russia and Ukraine have been the breadbasket of Europe in terms of wheat, for example. Although they attributed all these economic problems to the Russia, Ukraine war, these problems had started before the war. But I will not blame the epidemic as all countries and global media do. The problem goes back even further. Um, these problems were with us long before COVID. You know, we call it the revenge of the old economy. While America printed only $1 trillion until 2008, after the 2008 crisis, it printed three times the money it printed in 100 years to save the banks and the economy. And more importantly, after the coronavirus epidemic emerged, it printed twice that amount in just three months. Printing that much money would inevitably devalue the dollar and increase inflation. America will either endure higher inflation or be plunged into a crisis as it resolves inflation. Do you know that there is only one plan to save America from this economic collapse and that this plan belongs to a... A new world order. A new world order. New world order. A new world order. Küresel düzeyde yeni bir dünya düzeni inşa ediliyor. Daha adil bir küresel düzeni savunuyoruz. Not only America, but the whole world is grappling with inflation that has not been seen since the 1980s. The US Federal Reserve had to raise interest rates by 50 percentage points for the first time in 22 years to fight inflation. Just days after this decision, there was a 1 trillion drop in crypto money markets, with losses not seen since the 2008 crisis in global stock markets. So, is the coronavirus epidemic or the war between Russia and Ukraine the reason why the American economy is dragged into crisis along with the world. No, these two major events only accelerated the crisis because the real cause of the crisis is the end of life of the American based global economy. It will suffice to look at history to understand this. The superpowers of their time remained the world's most powerful economy for an average of 100 years. For example, France was the state with the strongest currency for 95 years, from 1720 until 1815 when it lost the Napoleonic Wars. For 105 years, from 1815 to the end of the First World War, Great Britain had been the strongest economy in the world. From 1920 to the 2020s, that is, for 100 years, it guided the global economy with the American currency. With the coronavirus epidemic, America seems to have come to the end of its 100-year power. Nobel Prize winning economist Paul Krugman is now warning that the world economy could be headed for a recession this year. Slowdown is going to lead to 
another recession or another financial crisis. Now, if we look at the global economy for the last year or so... In other words, although everyone blamed the global crisis on the epidemic or the war, an economic crisis was inevitable for America, because America's economic power came from its production 100 years ago. For the last 50 years, America has moved from a real production, based economy, to a non-production financial economy. In other words, the US economy is largely a bubble. How does? Let's explain this with numbers. While the world's annual production is $85 trillion, the total of virtual assets in financial markets is close to $900 trillion. This means that there are monetary transactions that have no equivalent of 10 times the real value produced in the world. Likewise, while the annual production of America is $21 trillion, the total value of all American companies traded in the stock market is $100 trillion. Of course, these numbers do not reflect the real values of the companies, because these values are artificially inflated independently of production. And it is inevitable that a balloon that inflates this much will burst sooner or later. The first time the Dow Jones Industrial Average passed the 13,000 mark. Another milestone for the market, 14,000 on the money. Record-breaking kickoff to the fourth quarter as the Dow Jones Industrial Average closes at a new all-time record high. Apple shares are just getting hammered this morning. The stock market is now down 21%. Because we're now down 43%. It was the worst day on Wall Street since the crash of 1987. This could be the most serious recession in decades. And that means life, as most Americans know it, is about to change, in some cases dramatically. Similar bubble burst in the United States in 2008 and turned into a global crisis. In fact, the foundations of the current crisis were laid in those days. Because the US Federal Reserve did not print even $1 trillion in total until the 2008 crisis. But it printed $3, 5 cents trillion by 2016 to save the bankrupt banks and revive the economy after the crisis. When the American economy started to recover a little, they began to withdraw this huge amount of money from the market so that it would not cause inflation. Very little money had been withdrawn until 2019, when in September there was a shortage of cash in the repo markets, which allow banks to borrow on a daily basis. The US Federal Reserve began to put money back into the market to ease the system. As you can see, even withdrawing very little money from the market made the banking system difficult. Not so many months later, the coronavirus epidemic appeared. The US Federal Reserve did an incredible thing to stem the tide of crisis around the world. While it did not print even $1 trillion for 100 years, until the 2008 crisis, it printed $3 trillion in three months after the epidemic. Because in the 2008 crisis, when some banks were allowed to fail, many banks went bankrupt due to the domino effect. That's why at the beginning of the pandemic, they printed as much money as they could to prevent the financial sector from collapsing. All economies came to a standstill with the closure policies implemented during the epidemic period. First, there was a shortage of supply along with disruptions in the supply chains due to the cessation of production and the prices of all products increased. After two years with the epidemic, when the economy started to open, this time excessive demand emerged. As supply could not meet this excessive demand, prices rose a little more. As if all this was not enough, Russia invaded Ukraine. Of course, it is not difficult to predict what will happen when the world's largest wheat exporter occupies the fifth largest exporter. Global food prices have reached the highest level in history, surpassing Arab Spring levels. At such a time, the central bank continued to print money and inflation broke the 40-year record. Of course, central bank Governor Powell is not even that hard to print money. Because the central bank prints a very small part of the money in the market, they press a few keys on the computer for the rest, and this money is created virtually. So, is this printed money going to the American people? No. Trillions of money flow to the stock markets, to global companies. It is enough to look at the graph to understand this. As the central bank money supply increases, the total size of the American tax giants in the stock market increases at the same rate. That's why when the central bank increased interest rates, there are serious losses in the stock market. The US Federal Reserve has increased interest rates this much for the first time since 2000 to combat inflation. The reason they raise interest rates is to reduce demand and make borrowing more costly. In short, they want to slow down the economy and stop the increasing inflation. However, this could plunge the American economy into crisis because the current monetary system is on the verge of collapse. Since the 1980s, America has lowered interest rates and printed more money to stimulate the economy whenever a crisis has broken out. When the economy started to improve, he started to increase interest rates and withdraw money from the market. However, 
As you can see in the chart, he had to lower interest rates more than the previous time in order to save the economy in every crisis. Because each time the next crisis broke out before I could raise the interest rates to the previous level, there is a problem that, in the 2008 crisis, the US Federal Reserve lowered the interest rates to zero. In fact, countries such as Sweden and Japan gave negative interest rates below zero to get their economies out of the crisis. Here, America preferred to print six times the money it has printed in 100 years instead of lowering the interest rate in the coronavirus epidemic. That's why America is trying to raise interest rates in response to rising inflation. However, as interest rates rise, money is not as easily available in the market as before, which drives companies and borrowers into bankruptcy. And the biggest debtor in the world right now is the United States. The United States officially owes over $30 trillion in debt. In other words, every newborn American baby will be born with a debt of $500,000. Let's first look at how the United States borrows. While the central bank is responsible for the money printed, the US Treasury Department is responsible for the debts. The USA, like all states, covers its public expenditures with the taxes it collects. But because the taxes are insufficient, it goes to borrowing. The Treasury sells debt papers called Treasury bonds to borrow money. An investor, for example, buys a 30-year Treasury bond at two interest for $1,000. The Treasury sends $20 to the investor every year in return for the interest. And at the end of 30 years, it buys back the bond and pays the investor $1,000. In other words, while the investor gains, the American government also finds debt. 35 of America's debt belongs to American banks, investors and states. The US government is the largest buyer of us debt at 40s. Yes, you heard it right. The US government owes them money too, because the government's expenditures, such as social security and health insurance, are kept as treasury bonds. The United States is also indebted to its own Federal Reserve. Today, when America raises interest rates to fight inflation, it also increases these borrowing rates, so both the American government and companies will have a harder time finding debt. Well, what if America likewise cannot find debt or pay its debts? If America cannot find a debt, the taxes it collects will not be enough for the expenditures, so it will not be able to pay the salaries of the employees and will not be able to make expenditures such as health insurance. And most importantly, the American state may go bankrupt if it cannot pay the debts it has taken so far. To avoid this bankruptcy, American billionaires have a plan. Climate change is an incredibly complex issue, and using just today's technologies won't allow us to meet our ambitious goals. The reason is that almost all of our zero carbon technologies are more expensive than their fossil fuel counterparts. So the plan is they will invest in environmentally friendly technologies using the climate crisis as an excuse. By including not only companies, but also the US government in the plan, they will soon change all production their own way. But as Bill Gates said, new technologies they call eco-friendly are much more expensive than harmful fossil resources. Therefore, the USA has to print more money to make these investments. But if it prints more money, the already high inflation will rise even higher. A few years ago when I realized that um, climate risk is investment risk, and if, if we don't find the new technologies very rapidly, it's going to be highly inflationary to, to get to a green world. Here, billionaires propose a new production model using the climate crisis as an excuse. This new model will bring many benefits to the rich at the same time. Billionaires will say that we have to spend to switch to environmentally friendly production, so they have an excuse that no one can object to to print money. As they have invested in these eco-friendly production models long ago, their control will be increased. If things don't go as they expected, they have a second plan. We need to do it ourselves before government does it uh, for us. In other words, the rich people will pay for the new model, not the state. I'm a capitalist, but uh, just, I want, I, I, if you can make a billion bucks, great. Just pay your fair share, pay a little bit. A firefighter and a teacher pay more than double, double the tax rate that a billionaire pays. That's not right. That's not fair. According to the plan, the tax rate paid by the rich will be increased. Thus, with this money, the budget deficit will be closed and the money needed to switch to the new model will be found. As a result, the American economy is on the brink of a major crisis. They will either become unable to pay their debts and go bankrupt, or they will continue to print money and increase inflation even more. As more money is printed, the debts of both the United States and the people will increase even more. So sooner or later, they will have to face their debts that cannot be paid. The billionaires have made America their center for 100 years, 
and have exploited the American people, making them the most indebted people in the world. With the environmentally friendly production model they are trying to pass, they will extend the life of the system a little more, and they will exploit America a little more. Because the new production model will use renewable energy sources, that is, it will be technology-centered. Millions of people will lose their jobs because it will not need much manpower. Of course, they will not announce it this way. They will say that the new model will bring new job opportunities. Most importantly, they will not use the US dollar to implement this plan. And when the time comes, they will tell the world what former Secretary of the Treasury John Connolly told the world. The dollar is our money, but your problem.